from the Book of Recollections, a compilation of stories, remembrances, and half-truths collected from dead spirits in the queue at the gates of Atherna. You know, we were on our way here, and we stopped off at this absolutely lovely old place, the house of something or other, and while we were having drinks in the lounge, I spotted the most astounding set of sculptures in an alcove by the door, just an amazing set of abstracts. They had a, a fluid character, like water, caught in midair and then suddenly petrified. But there was something else to them, a, a, a sense of life, of, of history. I asked the concierge about them, and would you believe it, he told me that the artist was working in residency at that very hotel. He offered to introduce us, and of course we said yes, that she was the most fascinating woman, fiery and venomous, and her name was... Oh, what was her name, darling? Do you remember her name? The woman with the... Darling? Oh, that's right. You're not here anymore. It's just me. It's just... It's just me. At any rate, we were granted a tour of the artist's studio. A, a mad parlor littered with stone chips and tools and stained drop cloths all about exactly what you want an artist's studio to be. There was a piece I saw there, a singular piece, still in progress, that I could swear was made to tell the entire story of my life in the yawning sweep of its curve. Just the most unbelievable thing. Uh, I'm sorry, is this the gate to Bampton? We're supposed to be going to Bampton, isn't that right, darling? Darling? If you follow the ashen path out from Dead Man's Cross, you will find the House of Black Lanterns. There, if you're willing to wager that which you cannot imagine losing, you stand to win the very stuff of dreams. Of course, if the tables don't suit your interest, the house also offers some of the finest dining, entertainment, and lodging in all the Shadowfell, thanks to the efforts of its unparalleled, if eccentric, staff. Welcome to the Chimera, a role-playing adventure podcast. Our current game is the House of Black Lanterns, which takes place in the venerable campaign setting of Greyhawk, but kind of off to the side of it, and which we play using Simple World by Avery Alder, a pared-down version of Apocalypse World built to allow players to easily create their own Powered by the Apocalypse hacks. I'm Vin LeBate, and I'll be playing Lizzie, the bartender. Joining me this week are Jeffrey Bard as Pix the Bellhop, Brayden Lamb as Zani, the concierge, and Kelly Wiseman asked Ruth Jackson, the Game Master. Now, let's get started. All right, we're starting episode uh, two of the House of Black Lanterns. Um, slight adjustment to the cast. I think we'll probably... I think my intention here is to keep things flexible enough that people can drop in and drop out as necessary. So, um, you know, it's this is sort of a, a compilation of scenes from the house, and I think... I have some sense that there's a through line, and I think maybe we'll find more of a through line together, but I'm not going to worry too much about the fact that Casey isn't here now, and Brayden is, and next time we might have yet another rotation and who appears. So that's cool. I'm calling that a plan. All right? All right. Great. Fantastic. So, uh, Brayden, tell us, how do you see Zani fitting into the space of the hotel? Is there like a separate desk in the lobby? or Yeah. What do you think? I was I was figuring back behind the uh, hold on. I wrote down all the locations here. Back behind mm-hmm. the uh, the main lobby, there is a uh, maybe I didn't write it down. <laughs> anyway, uh, he works in the main office, which is accessible from the main lobby through a little window and also a door. Um, the main office houses the guest vault. Mm-hmm. Uh, where uh, guests can leave any can, can lock up any valuables. There is a key cupboard which is shaped like a honeycomb. There is a correspondence booth which uh, not many people have seen seen inside of, uh, but uh, it appears to be a closed cupboard from which emanate 
occasional flutters. Hmm. Hmm. And maybe we'll see it uh, in the in the course of the story if uh, if need be. Okay, so there's like a little o- there's an office basically. Mm-hmm. That's where you'll find Zani, unless he is uh, vanishing and reappearing somewhere else as needed. Right. Well, and presumably that's most of the time, right? Because he's he's out there figuring out what the hotel guests need and sort of arranging things. Mm-hmm. Um. So why don't you? tell us like so he's completing a job right he's just finishing up helping somebody something with somebody so tell me what what would an example of that be if he's finishing up doing his job with one particular case hit me with something in that in that vein uh okay zani and uh and pix are at the uh, pix is at the front desk and uh zani opens up the window and leans out and sighs well Lady Evermore is now on her way. Ah, uh, may she rest without words tonight. And uh, without any further requests. If only we were that lucky. You know, Lady Evermore herself didn't seem all that fussy. It was more her entourage. They were the ones who really kept me busy. 523 bags later? My arms are tired, man. Yes. Well, one second. There's a panting dog in here. <laughs> <laughs> there are no dogs allowed in the lobby. If you get to keep one, I want one too. Ah, oh, yes, that was uh, Lady Evermore's uh, fell hound. <laughs> it seems uh, she didn't want to keep it after all. Oh, wait, Zani, that reminds me. Have you ever seen anything that looks like this before. And Pix was sitting up on the front desk, uh, kind of desk, and he kind of hops off again, uh, hops on over to to Zani, um, and shows him this carved wooden fish with a, the head of like a turtle. It's about like, I don't know, about a foot long. It's about uh, five inches tall. And he kind of, Flutters his wings really hard and puts it up uh, in front of of Nyx. This is what they handed me as a tip. I don't really get it. Uh, all right. Um, can I try to identify it? Um, yeah. That sounds like a clever roll to me. Yeah. So just uh, 2d6 and add one to it. <clears throat> there you go. Eight. Uh, describe it for me again, Jeff. So it is a wooden, or at least feels like wood and looks like wood, um, carving of a fish that has what looks to be a turtle's head or some kind of lizard in that sort of vein. Mm -hmm. It has like some faded color to it. Uh, It looks like it's been out in the sun for a really long time. Um, It's about a foot long and five inches tall, or I guess the fish is about five inches wide. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's about it. It's really light uh, compared to its size. Like it might be made of balsa wood or something. Okay. So, um, Zani looks at this, thinks it over. Taps his finger on the uh, on his uh, porcelain mask and it goes tunk, tunk, tunk. Right, I'm going to say that Zani recognizes this as a very significant artifact from Thark, from the Empire of Thark, but like not contemporary Thark craftsmanship. This has got to be at least a thousand years old based on the condition of the item. And you would guess that it would be worth a great deal to someone, um, to the right someone, especially a collector or someone interested in the history of the Tharkish Empire. Hmm. Pix, you chuckle-headed chunk of chaff. (laughs) This is worthless. (laughs) You know, I got the impression it might be. These deadbeats. 523 bags. And they give me some, they give me some wood. I don't know if there's like a there's there's probably a trash can on the other side of where um, where Zani's standing. So like 
Pix kind of like pulls himself up further onto that counter and through the window uh, and then finds, like looks around, finds the trash can and then drops it in and uh, and says, yeah, that's what I think of that. And I as well. I just, I just want to be paid for my work. You know, I've got a smile on my face. I keep people happy. The least they could do is give me something that, you know, I can use. Can't even use that. Not even heavy enough to be a paperweight. Ugh. Well, well, you know, this the, the the tips and the pay, those will come with experience, with years. When you've been here as long as I have, hey, you 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 find a way to. We're uh, not going to go down this road again. You know I've been here longer than you have. You know I have. Oh, picks you doltish drove of dross. Name me one of the originals. Name me one. Just one. I've met them all. Well, the two of you are spatting about this. Imhotep, the actual front desk clerk, comes through one of the side doors, not clear where he's coming back from, uh, and takes up his position behind the desk, which is sort puts him sort of between the two of you. Uh, as a reminder, Imhotep is a dragonborn mummy, so um, it's a dragonborn that's been mummified um, and has a number of cartouches and other uh, stone and wooden talismans worked into the bandaging uh, around his body. Um, doesn't make any particular acknowledgement, just sort of gruffly stands in place, waits for the next guest to arrive. No one says anything? I'm trying to think of something quippy, but I'm having a hard time. That's okay. We'll just say, you know, bickering continues on the mm-hmm. subtitles. And um, just as he's in position and, you know, clearly ready for the next person to walk in, the next person walks in. A woman with uh, pale skin and long somewhat crinkly flowing red hair dressed in light sort of gauzy clothing there's both a lot of it and it's not very um modest so think i mean basically like a like blousy pants that don't fully cover her legs a blousy top that that doesn't fully cover her arms her midriff is bare uh a lot of bangles earrings, things that are jangly and attention getting without looking at all expensive. They're not like made of rare materials or anything. Uh, She's also very heavily pregnant and has a small sack slung over her shoulder, um, looking very concerned. Oh, and she has a tattoo of a red rose on her left cheek. She comes in and uh, approaches the front desk. Uh, Zani steps aside from the window and then steps out from behind a pillar. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings. Wait, you, do you want to describe Zani? Oh, yeah. This would be a good opportunity. Zani is uh, unnaturally lean. Uh, you might guess uh, some kind of elf, but uh, his body is completely obscured by clothing and a white porcelain mask with a just a slightly eerie fixed smile and uh, empty eye sockets that presumably he can see out of, though though you can't quite see his eyes. Uh, He is dressed in uh, black, purple, and cream motley, sort of like a harlequin or jester, but but a, a kind of elegant version of that. And it looks like it's made out of silk, but it the silk is probably several hundred years old because it's starting to rot a little bit. She um, fiddles with her bag. Again, she's holding it over over her shoulder and says, I I need a place to stay. Well, there is no better place in the Shadowfell than the House of Black Lanterns. You are a very wise customer. Uh, How may we furnish you? She um, looks around nervously and up at the somewhat gaudy um, vaulted ceiling and uh, then says, just something simple is fine. I don't need anything fancy. Uh, So Zani has this sort of always on ability that I called 
every year servant where he's always aware of the primary need of anyone in the house of black lanterns mm-hmm. uh what what is what is she primarily concerned with right now safety hmm uh well we have some very secure and private rooms for you if uh, if you would like uh Pix here or Imhotep can can show you to your room. He beckons like behind his back with a with a finger. Imhotep responds in a booming voice. I do not show the customers to their rooms. <laughs> I keep the ledger. <laughs> he opens the book and starts you know, leafing through it to the right page. Very good. Pix uh, hops off the front desk and says, "That would be my job." My my dear, can I take your bag? She says, uh, no, no. Sort of pulls away from Pix a little bit as she does that. Uh, that I don't know. Thank you. I don't need uh, help with that. But uh, yes, a room would be would be quite all right. Again, nothing fancy, please. Of course. I believe the uh, the mahogany room then, Pix. Mahogany room coming right up. Wait, is she going to check in? She's got to um, check in. Yeah, yeah. So, so Imhotep uh-huh. um, uh, the bandages wrapped around him flutter a little bit with the force of his um, pointed throat clearing and she uh, <laughs> takes up the pen and um, writes down Crimson Rose in the guest ledger. And then she she pulls some coins not from the bag over her shoulder but from somewhere else secreted on her person. Not really obvious where there could be pockets on clothing like this, but somehow there there were. And so she put some coins on the table. Not like a huge amount of coins, but also, you know, enough certainly for a room. Very good. A true pleasure to have you stay with us, Lady Rose. He inclines his head knowingly that like, obviously that's not your name, but that's what we'll call you. She 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 audibly laughs. I'm not a lady. Never have been and never will be. Well, you certainly could have fooled me. She she sort of perks up for the first time and like she thinks it's it's funny to be addressed that way. So. Well, uh, let me show you to the mahogany room then. If you'll just follow me, it's just a quick hike down this this hallway. Uh, before you go, Miss? Question mark hovering in the air. Rose, will you be needing the services of any physician? I can recommend several. She thinks about it and for too long. Right? Like it's there's an audible break while she's thinking about it. A a midwife. Um AI gets settled and come speak to you about that later. Of course. I will be right behind the desk. All right, Pix, she'll follow you to the mahogany room. I said it was just down the hall, but and technically it is, but there are a lot of turns involved. We don't actually walk a, a, a long distance, but there's like five or six lefts and rights uh, that we need to take to get to the mahogany room. Um, but eventually we get there, and the mahogany room, obviously the door is made out of mahogany, and so is the door frame. Um, the handle of the door is also made out of mahogany. Um, it's a very heavy big door and pick spouse a little bit uh here is your room miss rose thank you very much she um she looks at some coins in her hand and seems to sort of dither about something and then picks one out and uh hands it to you uh picks will take it oh well thank you very much uh if you need anything let me know my name is picks don't bother that old concierge he has a stick up his ass <laughs> if you need anything i know where to get I'll be seeing you around, Miss Rose. Thank you very much. She gives you a smile and then closes the door. It closes soundlessly. The 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 conversation was being swallowed up by the uh, by the by the wood in the room. Ah. All right, and then I hop and skip back to the front desk. Now, Zana, you said you know that this this always on ability. You know generally what people need, but you also get sort of an alert when they really need something. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, while Pix is off 
uh, showing Crimson Rose to her room, you what, what's that like when you get an alert? How does that manifest? Uh, just an intense internal sense that I am needed and that I have to help. So you get that that gut oh, I really need to help somebody kind of thing mm-hmm. uh, feeling. Is it like is it like a direction? Do you get a name attached to it? What, what do you think? Do you hear a bell in your head? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it's like a like a slightly higher pitched bell than the uh, than the than the moving bell. Mm-hmm. Um, ding, ding. And yeah, then I just start walking down a hall like a the uh, the suit is almost kind of drawing him like a uh, like a dowsing rod. OK, so you're dowsing, you're dowsing, you're dowsing. You find yourself at a door of one of the longer term apartments, right? So there's, while people can stay any amount of time, depending on their ability to pay and a number of other factors, uh, there's some effort made to sort of slot people in on the basis of how long they're expecting to stay. um, So that the people who are here longer term tend to be um, grouped together, whereas the shorter turnover spaces are in a different part of the hotel. So, um, this is in this is in sort of the longer term area. Mostly people who are going to be here for several months, maybe a year or more. And uh, you find yourself at a particular door, and you can hear um, some crashing and like shattering noises from inside. Dunny raps politely but firmly on the door. Uh, shattering noises continue. There's uh, like a like a a grunt of exasperation, like, ugh, from the other side of the door. And then it opens. Uh, standing on the other side of the door, there is a, um, a woman in kind of adventuring gear kind of stuff, so like very practical clothing. Um, so essentially a shirt and pants. I mean, what the generic fantasy equivalent of that is. Uh, so like not a lot of cultural indicators, but... Uh, a woman with um, scaled skin, uh, a mouth that includes snaky fangs, and a whole bunch of snakes for hair, right? <laughs> so hmm. um, she is holding a chisel in one hand and a hammer in the other. Behind her, you can see that there's all this like, huge drop cloth put down, and there's all this dust and like broken stone on it. And she says, what? Uh... Pardon the intrusion. Uh, would you be needing anything at this time? <sighs> Do you have any inspiration in your pocket? Well, I... I've... Any hint of the muse hanging around? She gestures like she doesn't expect you to be able to say anything to them. Well, I would flatter myself if, the, if that were the case. Uh, certainly, certainly you would be more knowledgeable about uh, such matters. This is Jackson Dreda. Jackson Dreda is an artist in residence at the House of Black Lanterns. She creates art, which is then viewed in parts of the casino and other elements of the hotel, mostly sculpture, although she does work in a few other media from time to time. Um, So not someone that Zani sees with any regularity. She's mostly cooped up in her studio, but has some, like, once he opened the door and saw her, he's like, okay, I know, recognize who this Medusa is. Um, so getting back to the interaction, mm-hmm. I, I feel like I've been, I've been working inside my own head for too long. I need, I need something inspiring, something to, to begin the new project from, say, you, you find things for people, don't you? As one of my many tasks that I, that I offer to, to the guests of the House of Black Lanterns, I do. Great. Why don't you find me a model? Thanks. She shuts the door. A model. Sonny uh, slips into a, into a shadow again and starts... Uh, he, he makes his way over to the, to the bar. All right. What's going on in the bar, Vin? What time is it? Um, the, like, late afternoon, early evening? Sure. Yeah, so there's... There's the the beginnings of a crowd, um, you know, it's like a, a quarter full, but there's definitely some activity. So Lizzie is, you know, behind the bar, dealing drinks occasionally and and prepping various supplies, slicing fruits, that kind of thing. 
Okay. Small crowd like this, usually in, 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 in most circumstances in the bar or most of the other group areas, it's like at least 50% ghosts. Mm-hmm. And then there are some other living um, or, or not spectral, uh, at least, uh, figures hanging about. Hello, Lizzie, old salt. Zani, what brings you around here? Well, I'm sorry to say I wasn't looking specifically for you. Tell me, is Elodia still performing the uh, the Torque Cycle, the 14-hour opera for for our honored guest? Yes, I'm afraid she is. The lounge is, is halfway closed off for it. Pity. Uh, Jax Andretta, I don't know if you're acquainted with her. Hmm, the one, the one with the hair. Yes, if you can call it that. The the very interesting quaff. Uh, Jax Andretta is looking for a model, and I wonder if you have encountered anybody in here recently with an interesting, unique look. This is this is obviously a you know an un, understatement because basically anybody in here is completely unique from anybody else. <laughs> yeah. Lizzie takes a look around the room and like, despite the fact that everyone is in some way, ghostly and or bizarre at this point in the evening, it's mostly regulars, which like the look on her face is just completely unimpressed. Eh. <sighs> well, how long has it been since the, uh, the last game? Probably more than a day, less than a month. Mm. So some of those folks may or may not still be here. I think you would, if if you don't know that they've left, unless you want to try to declare that they've left. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see. There were those two rather statuesque gentlemen, but I think that would pose some logistical problems as Jax usually works in stone and it'd be quite a large block in vault. There were those two children that had sort of a, a hon, haunted or haunting look, depending on how you like to think about it. I haven't seen them around in a bit, but of course this isn't really the place where children tend to lounge that much. And then there's this lot, but you know, this lot. She gestures out over the room. But I'll keep my eye open. Thank you. Zani lingers. His head inclines and declines very slightly. This this is um this is Zani trying to uh covertly uh size up Lizzie as a potential model. I'm so glad you did that because I was gonna suggest it. <laughs> Well, then there is that Lady Evermore, but I don't think that you could really get her to sit still for more than a couple of minutes. Oh, she is not coming back here anytime soon. Mm. Thank the Raven Queen. Uh, I wonder if, uh, would you be able to step away from the bar for a few minutes? She glances out over the crowd. Yeah, I think a couple of the assistants can probably take it for a few minutes. So probably what appears to be like a square drawer opens itself uh, under under the bar and uh, little arms and a little eyeball appear. <laughs> and it cranks itself up on two little spindly metal legs. There you are, lad. I shouldn't be too long, I don't think. Although you never know around here. But, you know, just keep an eye on this lot. Do you require refreshment? <laughs> no, remember, I'm the one that dispenses the refreshment. When you're not dispensing the refreshment, I can offer many varieties of soda and mixes. Very good. Let's go. (laughs) So one of the ghosts comes over and gets a drink refill. And as the assistant is pouring, says, eh, it's a living. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right. So uh, you're going to go up back up to Jackson Dredd's room. Um, yeah, uh, as 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 they're walking along, um, let's say yeah, Lizzie like rounds a corner first, and uh, Zani does not appear to follow, does not appear mm-hmm. to be back in the 
hallway they previous they, they had just left, but is nonetheless there at the at the door of uh, of the the long term apartment of Jack Sandretta when when Lizzie arrives. Sorry, just had to uh, get something. Something occurred to me. Is there any more crashing going on? No, it's quiet on the other side of the door. He raps gently. Another exasperated grunt. What is it? She throws the door open. A thousand pardons, Miss Andretta. I believe I have found a potential model for you, uh, if you would care to take a look. He steps aside and gestures to Lizzie. Lizzie only just now figured out what was going on. <laughs> oh, that's what you meant. Oh, all right, yeah. Um, Jackson Dreda sort of sizes Lizzie up. She looks her up and down and says, hmm, interesting lines. Come in. Let me take a look at you in the better light. She gestures once with one hand and then immediately turns and walks away. Like, that's enough. You should be able to follow her from that. Um, walks in the studio. There are a number of um, specially made lanterns that have candles burning in them, but they have... Uh, uh, polished metal discs behind them to sort of focus the light down at her workspace. Um, so it's fairly bright, especially given the hour uh, in, in the space that she's working in. Again, there are bits and pieces of stone all over the place in here, but there are also a couple of um, what appear to be finished projects that are sitting on pedestals uh, back away from the drop cloth, sort of away from the work area. Uh, and they're they're all works in different colored stone, um, very flowy, uh, abstract. They're not, they're not life depictions or not obvious, I mean, weird life depictions. They are, um, but, but interesting sort of expressions of, of, um, like ribbon and, um, stuff that's, that seems, seems similar to, to maybe, Shapes made with water or um, some other sort of non-solid substance, but frozen in stone. Well, it looks like you've been busy. I try to keep busy, but sometimes uh, the muse just doesn't speak when you want it to speak. She sort of walks around Lizzie as she's talking, occasionally uh, reaches out and like lifts up her arm a bit and then let, like it's very much like okay object appraisal what what do i see here kind of thing yeah lizzie moves as directed but just sort of keeps talking mm-hmm. the house sort of does that to people i think if you're here for the while there's sort of this odd interplay between strangeness and stagnation you sort of got to find ways to keep your mind focused i mean you can really see it with the ghost they'll sort of drift drift out into nothingness if they don't keep themselves occupied in new ways? Yes, uh, I've I've found that myself. This is my third stay here, and the last two times I had to leave over this issue, but I had I had hoped to push through. I, there is a great deal of opportunity here, and I do enjoy the benefit of the gratis lodging. She's sort of craning around, looking at Lizzie from different angles, um, really thoroughly not respectful of her personal space, but also in no way disrespectful in like any sort of intentional way, right? Like uh, just purely assessing her in the manner of an object in three-dimensional space rather than the manner of a person, right? Mm. But otherwise not like makes, certainly says nothing that is, that is, um, uh, critical or anything like that just sort of like mm, okay so light hits this part of this body from this direction in this way um it's very uh detached mm. yeah again lizzie was raised on a ship in a military environment so she has very uh loose notions of personal space to begin with mm. so she goes along with it very easy very good she turns to zani away from lizzie and says she'll do Excellent. I'm glad to be of service. Uh, incidentally, uh, if I might uh, consult with your uh, artistic sensibility, 
he produces from the from the folds of his costume the uh that wooden sculpture of a uh of a fish with a turtle head uh i would be interested to to get your opinion of this piece she looks at it and not only do her eyes go wide but all the eyes on her snakes go wide (laughs) (laughs) where did you get that oh uh i'm i'm sorry she puts up her hands like i i don't think i even want to know where you would get something like that i she she sputters a little bit the first time that that she's the one who's sort of on the back foot in any of these interactions you know it's you know it's funny i just uh found it in a little heap of rubbish well, you're going to need a better story than that when someone catches you with it. Uh, look, as I said, uh, that's way more heat than I can handle. You'd better watch who you show that to from now on. Lizzie is sort of standing there with her arms in whatever position she was left in. Mm-hmm. Now, a sort of an interesting reaction in a, in a space like this. Who's going to be looking for something like that? here that it's going to be such a big deal jump cut to um back at the front desk Pix and imhotep are uh waiting around for the next customer what do you think that that the dynamic between Pix and imhotep is like i get the sense that like Pix will be talking a lot and imhotep like is annoyed by the incessant talking right like Pix. Picks has experienced a lot of downtime and he tries to keep himself sort of engaged with what's going on so he doesn't like lose a step. But, uh, you know, Imhotep and Pix have been at that front desk for a while now. And, and I think Imhotep is just trying to be as disengaged and like tries to get Pix to stop talking without being like super confrontational about it, but like just by not engaging. So it's a lot of Pix monologuing. Okay, so Pix is somewhere mid monologue about something or other. If you have a thought, that's fine. If not, you don't have to fill it in. Um, and Imhotep is just standing there, waiting, drumming his mummified fingers on the uh, desk. Occasional mummy grunt, you know, mm. <laughs> maybe in assent, maybe in disagreement, maybe just in a general expression of his distaste for having Pix as a co worker. Uh, when through the main doors of the lobby, there comes a figure. Um, this figure is a tabaxi, which is essentially an anthropomorphic house cat um, in terms of the construction of the head and the face and the coloration of the fur. Uh, he is wearing black leather armor with a lot of straps and studs and occasionally spikes. He has a massive battle axe slung over his shoulder and a crossbow in the other direction, right? Like make an X behind him, battle axe, crossbow, uh, and a eye patch over his right eye. Uh, he walks up to the desk and says, a room. Hey, what's up? You going to get this? Mm. Motep takes out the book opens the book, pages through the book, turns it around, points to the next empty line, hands the pen. Now, you see, normally our concierge would be giving you this greeting, uh, but you can never seem to find him when you need him. And so I hope you don't mind. I'm just a humble bellhop. But if you need to know anything about this place, you just let me know. We've got just about anything your heart could want. The figure takes up the pen, and in the book, writes g dot m dot v dot hands the pen back to Imhotep. Imhotep looks at the page, looks at the figure, closes the book, turns around, takes key off the wall, and says, the room you requested, sir, gives him the key. Uh, does he have any bags? He does not have any apparent baggage. Um. He does have a sack, but he does not have, he's not like carrying extra bags. Right? Okay. Um, shall I show you to your room, Mr. Gumv? <laughs> there is a slight twitching of the whiskers at Gumv. 
but no further response. And he looks down at uh, Pix and says, you may do so. Well, uh, it's going to be right this way. Uh, you're going to be staying in the illustrious Rainbow Room. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, it says, uh, I did not make any particular request about decorations. No, but according to what that key says right there, uh, you're in the rainbow section. <laughs> Pretty great. There's like lights that kind of shine on the walls all different ways. Um, Uh-oh. That'll keep I him busy. <laughs> I've heard it's pretty great. Haven't stayed there myself, but um, right this way. It's just down the hall. He follows. So what brings you to this fine establishment? Have you stayed here with us before? I haven't had the pleasure. You know, you didn't look familiar, and I know just about anyone who has, so I'm, I'm glad this isn't awkward. Yes. I'm very glad this isn't awkward, too. He's sort of looking everywhere but at pics, right? He's sort of not, not in a touristy way, in a like, I'm looking at my surroundings because I have very keen situational awareness at all times kind of way. Right. Well, don't you worry. This is a place you can relax. Everyone is safe in the House of Black Lanterns. And again, are you here for any particular reason? Are you going to hit the gambling floor? Or is there something else that you want? Or are you just trying to catch 40 winks? I go where the work takes me. And the work takes you here? Today it does. Arriving at the room... He opens the door, and through the door you can see a fountain um, that puts out water in many different colors, like glowing, glowing water in several streams, seven different streams for the main colors of the rainbow. And there's bright, twinkling wallpaper. The carpet is actually scintillating with different colored um, they colors that literally run through it, like there's there's sort of streams of light that go back and forth through the carpet. Uh, it is very, very garish in there. This figure again, gray fur, speckled with white and black, all black armor, eye patch, taciturn. This is about as far from his aesthetic as you can possibly get. <laughs> um, he looks at the uh, lodgings. He looks at pics. He says, I suppose it will do. The house knows what you need. And this right here, it's what you need. Let me know if uh, you need any help, if you need any help finding anything. Uh, Remember, that concierge is a little good for nothing. So uh, (sighs) make sure you talk to me first. I'll set you right. You have a good night, sir. You as well. He takes out a coin and drops it, not not disdainfully, but like, you know, he's relatively tall and Pix is not. So he's above Pix when he drops it and can anticipate that Pix will catch it. Um, more, more a sense of like disinterest. Like, this is the thing that I'm doing now. This is how much effort I'm willing to expend on giving you the tip. Mm-hmm. Um, the coin has on it imprints that Pix can't remember seeing before. Not necessarily hasn't seen before. Pix has seen a lot of different coins in his day. But it's not familiar. It's not any of the major um, uh, alphabets that he can remember seeing. And there's there's an image um, in profile of a human face, not uh, uh, probably a guy, but other than that, no... Nothing really to say about it. Um, and then there's some writing around the edge of the coin. This matches a lot of coins, mm-hmm. right? But it's in a type that he doesn't recognize. Okay. Huh. Well, thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Um, we'll be seeing you later. Dinner gets served at 5 p.m. And Pix takes his leave. That's it this week for the Chimera. 
Our theme music is Hoof, Heart, and Hiss by Matt Weber. You can find a link to more of Matt's work and any other music used in this episode in the show notes. You can support the show by going to patreon.com slash chimeropod or by leaving us a rating on your favorite podcast app or just by telling a friend. We'll be back with a new episode in two weeks, but if you want to see what we're up to in the meantime, you can find us online at thechimera.space or on Twitter or Facebook at ChimeraPod. Thanks for listening. Testing my levels, 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 levels. Okay, we're good.